Hey everyone, I am Elias and I am giving a talk at the Mini Jam conference, haha. Uh, and my talk is about my general thoughts on game jamming. Now, who am I? I am just a guy who game jams way too much. I, I've done probably around 70 or 80, somewhere in the middle there, and I've only finished around 25 of them as of this date. Uh, and I will be going over that and why maybe you don't need a 100% uh, submit to participation rate and why why that's not as big a deal as you might think. Finishing fin finishing a jam is very, very good to do, but d don't like lose sleep over it. But let me just talk about some of my credentials on why I feel I can give a, a talk on my opinions on game jamming. So, I I tend to place pretty okay in game jams. I've been doing this for a while. I have a very try-hard personality type. Uh, I, I go ham in the things I enjoy, and I, I, and I love to game jam. Now, something to point out are my placements. I've done pretty well. Uh, I've placed first in two mini jams, which is a bi-weekly ongoing game jam, which it's a very nice game jam to just have there that you can just do whenever, really. Uh, I've placed top 50 in both Ludum Dare and GMTK. Both are very uh, big game jams uh, relatively to a lot of other jams. Like, I think the Ludum Dare had like 1,000 submissions that year. Uh, the And the... Uh, well, in, for the compo, I mean. I, I did that in the compo, which is two days. And for the GMTK one, that was last year's, so it was not that long ago. I did show up in Mark Brown's video, but... Uh, not as like a, a main game, just as a small little filler for five seconds, which was really nice. So, placements don't matter. I just put so much time into telling you my placements and how they totally are, uh, signify anything about whether I'm capable or not. To either. Yeah, no, they, they don't matter. I'm not giving this talk, or I, mean, I don't feel like I can give my opinions on game jamming because I've placed well. I'm giving these because I've done like 80 of them and I failed most of them. I, like you might think, "Oh, first place. This is this is pretty this is this is good, good credentials right there." It's like, "No, I for every like good placing jam game I have, I've like I did like 10 jams before that where I just like I didn't do that well, or wasn't happy with the result, all that. I, I, I feel like I should give this talk, because I really love game jamming. It's one of my favorite things to do, actually. Uh, and it's not because I do well in them. I do well because I like them, and because I like them, I do a lot. So I want to talk about my jam process, and just thoughts on jamming that might or may not help you. So, first of all, placements don't matter. Like, they... There, there is a difference between trying hard and trying to win. I'm very, I'm very try hard with like a lot of things I do. I just find it fun to do. So I want to talk about briefly one of the the dangers of caring about your placements. Right, this is a game I made for a, a small game jam called K Jam, and it's one of the only game jams I've ever participated in that had a had a cash reward. And I was a college student, uh, still kind of am, but. I was in college when I was uh, making this, and I had, like extra money to like spend on more junk food to survive off of. It was like, yeah, that sounds nice to do something I usually do. This game sucks. Like this is this is my, one of my worst games ever. Uh, it's still on my itch page. Surprisingly, it's just that I I, I like it for documentation's sake. I, I I like this jam game as kind of like a. I don't don't care about your placements because again, this jam w had cash prizes, and because I had cash prizes, I really wanted to get first. Uh, and so I started overthinking every little detail of the game. Like uh, this game ha had to have like some sort of uh, upgrade system or like shop for items. That was like the the theme. Uh, and yeah, I, I made this in the weekend. The entire time I was stressed. I wasn't sleeping properly. I wasn't making good decisions because well, I was like, oh, I, I, I think this would be cool, but I'd rather make something I know I could just like pump out and make really good. Something a lot of uh, things, uh, something to consider is 
With placements, if you polish the hell out of your game, that generally helps a lot. So I was like, I'm going to make something super simple uh, that I could just spend the entire time polishing. I didn't have enough time to polish it, uh, and I didn't enjoy playing it at all. So it was hard to polish it because there, there's just nothing I could latch on to be like, that's the part I really like. So, so what I'm trying to say here is if you hyper fixate on placing well, you'll start prioritizing things that should not matter to you at all. And when they don't matter to you, you're going to work less on it. And if you work less on it, it's going to be a work a worse game a lot of what i want to talk about is how to kind of get a lot out of your time like how to push yourself to work more on your games because that's that's what comes down to what makes a good jam game and a bad jam game is how much time you're working effectively so identify your personal goals there's a lot of reasons to game jam again placements could be one of those reasons. You don't have to say that placements don't matter to you. Placements don't matter, but they might matter to you. And if you care about placements, then identify that early. Know that I care about placements. I don't recommend caring about placements, I should say. Uh, but you could. The things that you could, like, care about. You could go into a game jam just to have fun, right? And the reason this is an important point to me... You could go into a game jam to have fun, you could go into a game jam to learn, you could go into a game jam to compete, you could go into a game jam to meet new people, right? Depending on your personal goals, you might want to do different things during the game jam. And that sounds obvious, but I, I feel like a lot of people will give out advice on how to game jam that is very specific to one of these personal goals without stating which one. Like, a lot of people will tell you, for a game jam, like, oh, stick to what you know, uh, make something, you can, like, make something small, right? Like, oh, finish the, finish the primary loop in, in the first day. And I, I would say that that is good advice. If your personal goal for a game jam is to end up with a quality product... Uh, that you can be happy with. And that is a very good personal goal that a lot of people have for game jams is to end up with a solid quality product that they could just be like, hell yeah, I made that. Because that's a damn good feeling. <sighs> some other, but that advice doesn't transfer over if you're just looking to have some fun or play with a cool mechanic, if I go into a three-day game jam, right, and I die, and I tell myself I just want to, I just want to relax, I just want to have fun, and then my brain is like, oh, you should make a town builder with RPG elements. That would go against the the advice of make make something small that you know you can finish on day one. Because I'm not building a town builder on day one, like no way, no how. But I'd have more fun if I did that. I would probably fail or have to drop out, but I'd have fun doing it, and I don't, I don't appreciate how much like of the advice people give isn't specific to goals. So, this is a project I made uh, in a ve for a very recent game jam, and I, I I did a lot of things I had never done before because I identified early on my personal goal was not to, I, I didn't want to place well, I didn't want to win, uh, I I didn't care about any of that. My personal goal for this specific game jam was I wanted to learn 3D modeling and dialogue systems. So that's what I made. I, I literally just was like, okay, I don't care about finishing. I don't even care about placing well. I just want to... Like, those were not my personal goals. My personal goal for this project was I'm going I'm to make a 3D game. Now, if I if I took in a lot of the advice that is out there for game jamming, like scope small, uh, focus on your strengths, don't don't uh, mess with shaders on day one, uh, then I wouldn't have had as much fun making this game, and it probably wouldn't exist. If I if my goal was to end up with a quality product that I was happy with by the end of the jam, I would not have undertook this project. Uh, I would have done something else that I know I could have made very good. 
But because I identified the personal goal, I made this game. It placed third in the jam uh, that it was for, which was really surprising. But a lot of jam advice, and I, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot with this, but I, I feel like it's very clear, or very important. A lot of jam advice does not consider the personal goal you set for a jam. Most, because most people will give advice based on their personal goals for jams, which a lot of the time is just, I want to make a quality product that I am happy to share. And a lot of people who, okay, this is a side tangent, a lot of people who give out jam advice in a very public way are YouTubers, and YouTubers generally really want to make something very presentable for their audience so that it draws in more views, and honestly, just because it's a lot more fun to watch videos about really good jam games. Uh, and I think, and they're usually the ones who give out advice, uh, which is a little backwards sometimes in my opinion, but it's it makes sense. Like, you respect the stuff they make because they, their personal goals are to make things that look at and are cool. Now, that's not the only reason somebody might jam. Again, if you're jamming for fun, no, there's nothing stopping you from doing whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to start repeating myself if I don't move on. But, but yeah, identify your personal goals. Are you here to have fun? Are you here to learn? Are you here to to win? Like, that's just something you can aim for. Well, it's not the best thing to aim for, but you can aim for that. Uh, do you want to make a quality product? Like, identify that before you do the jam, honestly. If you can identify that, it'll just smooth... It'll smooth your decision-making, because if you decide to overscope, because I love to overscope my pro jam product projects, then if you're just jamming for fun this time, that's... It's an overscope, baby! It's fun! Do it! But, uh, I'm, I digress. I'm a, I'm a bit, I'm a bit rambly. So, rest properly. And I, I tell people this all the time on, like, jam servers, uh, but there, there's some key aspects about resting that goes, like, un, ununderstood. Uh, and that is one of the big things that a lot of people will be like, okay, yeah, I take breaks, I work... I work two hours, and then I take like a half hour break all day, and then I go to sleep, and then I wake up, and I do that. It's like, yeah, I take breaks. It's like, well, you're 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 messing up your sleep because you need to take the time to let your brain get out of work mode before you go to sleep. Because a lot of people will jam like all day, and then right before, like they'll jam up until they sleep, and I. I that that is very unproductive. You will get less done doing that than just taking two, one or two hours before you go to sleep and just completely disconnecting from the jam. Disconnecting yourself like mentally from the jam is so important for resting. Like I, I end up I ended up clocking my or started clocking my hours for jams. Uh, I spent on jams that I've been very happy with the results. I have t I tend to work six hours a day, so for th like a three hour day, or more like a six hour day, an eight hour day, and then a six hour day. So that's about twenty hours of work total, which is a lot. But considering like it's a seventy two hour space, right? Uh, if it's a three day jam, seventy two hour space. I'm working for twenty of those hours. The rest is relaxing. Like, going on my phone and just having nice long baths. I like me a long bath. Like, a two-hour bath. Like, hell yeah, I'm a completely zone out and watch some YouTube. The reason this is so important is because it, like, if you exhaust your brain working, you're going to make bad choices. And a game jam, the, the quality of a game jam game isn't just about the amount of work put in, but it's the amount of smart decisions in what you're prioritizing. So if you put like 10 hours, like you have 20 hours, if you put 10 hours into gameplay and then 5 hours into art and 5 hours into sound, right? Like that's 
you don't con not everybody is going to consciously plan that out. You might, and that's a really good thing to to plan out your jam. But spending that time isn't going to be like perfectly equivalent. Let me try to put into to words what I'm trying to say in a bit of a better way. If you spend all your time like non-stop working on one thing, you you get diminishing returns uh from your from your own behavior because you tunnel vision right if you spend eight hours working on art then you start getting like completely like too into it to a point where like you start making art that's just crude in my opinion like for me personally uh that happens a lot i'm definitely going on a, a bit of a tangent with this but you know this is this is my talk and i and i'm a i'm a ramble a bit Uh, let me recenter my thoughts. When you work nonstop, like, and you don't take breaks or proper breaks, I should say. Again, people, I tell people all the time, take lots of breaks during jams, and then they take like half an hour breaks every two hours. Like that's that's going to create, but so not resting properly it creates bugs it leads to wasted time because you're making bad decisions because you get so tunnel visioned on your task like you'll for example just to, to put it into an example because those are better if you spend like two hours straight working on one thing when you take a 30 minute break your brain is probably going to be thinking about uh god i need to get back to that task and it's not done and it's rough. Instead of like thinking about the entire project of what you need to do, like you could have mechanics that are garbage for your jam game. But if you spend all your time just constantly tweaking one part of it, you're not gonna you're not gonna get far with it because like you're 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 polishing the silverware while the house is on fire is a good metaphor i once heard do not and the best way i find to like combat that desire to constantly tunnel vision on the things that aren't working on the things that just you you keep tweaking and they're not they're not twer like the way to combat that urge to just keep nailing this one thing out is to completely step away and i mean take like an hour break and don't go on the discords for the jam don't like message your jam friends i mean you can do that but like what i find works best for me at least in this case is i'll uh i'll go into a different room i'll turn on the tv i'll play some youtube uh sometimes it's game dev related youtube i'm not saying disconnect completely from game dev but definitely disconnect from your project like make cook food like actually take the time to cook food because that is just a valuable time where you're you're occupying your brain with another task. Like, move furniture. Do something else. Because it'll disconnect your brain, and when you come back, you'll your brain won't be hyper-fixated on that thing that you didn't finish. It'll be like, wow, the rest of the game isn't here yet. I should do that. And that is very powerful, because then you start using your hours better. Because it's not about... A game jam isn't about optimizing the amount of hours you have it is about using the hours you have to the best of your ability to get the most out of every hour you're working because you could have hypothetically you could work 72 hours straight for a three-day jam just don't sleep but there will be a point where your body just starts to give up and your motivation dwindles and you hate everything and you you get less done than the guy who who's only put in like 10 hours of work the entire like throughout the entire jam because you probably hyper fixated on something and kept breaking it and you just keep introducing bugs because bugs are avoidable and a lot of bugs are just caused by like what's a good word apathy <laughs> just get caused by becoming apathetic from being so goddamn tired and i I'm still not perfect at this. I still will have a game jam where I go super ham. 
and then burn out on the final day. But again, recently, the biggest thing that has helped me is going to sleep after a break. Don't go to sleep after working. Take the time to rest before you sleep. Because you got to disconnect from work mode before you sleep. Otherwise, you sleep in work mode, which can give you weird dreams, which might help with debugging sometimes, weirdly enough. But a lot of the time, it just makes you wake up tired. And something I was talking with uh, about with somebody in a jam or jam discord, which I feel is very necessary to bring up here, is that if you you might have a situation where you're you're about to go like take that one hour two hour break before you sleep, you're about to go disconnect, but you have this huge amount of like motivation and inspiration to work on the next step. You're like, I could smash that out in like ten minutes. I'm not gonna sleep until it's done. Take. Do what you ever you can to save it till tomorrow, because the hardest thing about a game jam is starting every day. And like, you'll wake up and you'll be like, "Okay, I gotta, I gotta get to work." That can be so hard sometimes, because you're like, "The the game isn't ready. It's not even close. Am I gonna be able to finish in time?" But if you have a thing you want to work on, you can start that day super productive, and it's like it's the best because that momentum will carry on through the entire day. But as to prevent myself from getting too rambly because I didn't set up deadline for how long this is supposed to be, I'm gonna move on. So do what you know how to do and do the things you don't. So with a game jam, something that is there's two basically conflicting ideas, which is and the reason there's two conflicting ideas goes back to identifying personal goals. Because these two conflicting concepts are the result of people having different personal goals. If you want to place very well in a game jam, like you care about placements and you care about making a product you're happy with, it doesn't just have to be about placements, it could also just be about self-satisfaction. Uh, what you want to do is you want to focus on uh, what you're good at. Focus on your strengths is very good jam advice. And just game dev advice in general, to be honest, even if you're working on larger, longer projects. But the thing is that a lot of people want to use game jams for learning, to learn new things, to get better at game dev, and you don't get better if you stay in your comfort zone. That's just, you you will stagnate if you stay in your comfort zone too much. But for every jam, you can, you can mix it. You don't have to do one or the other. You don't have to stick to what you know and stick to what you don't know. And this is one of the reasons uh, a lot of people... Like, I don't recommend you start with a game jam. I recommend you learn an engine first. Like, you spend a week or so messing around with an engine before doing a game jam. Is because of this, is that you can... You shouldn't do everything new every jam. You don't have to do a new engine. You don't have to do a new style every time. What you should do is take the things you know, the things you're comfortable with, and then add one or two things you just are super uncomfortable with. Like, I am not great at 3D stuff, or like 3D modeling. I've only just started 3D modeling, uh, but I, I'm getting better now because I've practiced. Uh, this is one of my uh, jam games. This jam game is probably one of my uh, less uh, good ones. It's still, but it's, it's, I think it still turned out pretty well, and that's because I combined things I knew how to do. Like, the graphics are super simple. I didn't try 3D modeling because I don't know how to make 3D games. Everything in this uh, game is, well, a cube. It's a rectangle and with textures because I can draw, or at least I enjoy drawing, and I'm very happy with the results when I draw. So I just slapped my drawings on 3D objects so I could focus more on learning 3D movement and an FPS controller because I never touched those before. Another example of this sort of thing is, well, you want to learn, you want to learn animation, like 2D animation. Well, make a game you know how to make, like that you've just take a game you've made before, uh, adapt it to the theme, and make it animated this time. Like, you don't have to follow any of this advice, but I think it's a very important thing because if you in my like if you try to do too many new things at once, like let's say for this project, 
I I made the FPS controller. I 3D modeled the gun myself. That is a free to use asset that I uh, got off uh, Free Game Art, I think, or the Unity Asset Store. Uh, the the cube is just a cube with textures, all that. But if I if I decided to like model like a fancy sci-fi cube and my own gun and the building textures, uh, and that I that I would have been screwed because I was already taking on so many new things. I barely finished this. Like this game had a, well, it was 3D, completely 3D for once. It, had a, it has a mini map, as you can see. It's a boss battle. I never made a game with a boss battle. I never made shooting mechanics. Like so much of this was new. If I stacked more new on top of this with 3D modeling, I would not have finished it, and I probably would have learned a lot less because I would have been completely overwhelmed. Don't overwhelm yourself while you're learning. Take it slow. Learn one thing at a time, or two things, depending on how motivated you feel. If you want a good result, stick to what you know. If you want to learn, do new things. But in my opinion, the best way to do it, no matter your goals, if you're trying to learn, if you're trying to play like place well, if you're trying to have fun, do, do both. Do, do, do a mix. To be fair, if you just really want to relax and chill you don't like if your goal is just fun and to chill and all that don't don't worry about this and just make whatever what it make make whatever man if your goal is to have fun during the game gym just just yeah just have fun man just whatever but yes do new things do old things don't overwhelm yourself when learning take it slow it's fine there is no shame in showing your influences uh, now, this sounds obvious, but I think a better way to phrase is, don't be afraid to basically rip, rip off things you like. I, uh, a lot of my jam games are in the moment, whoa, that thing is so cool, I want to make a thing that, like, references it, or is just, like, that thing's cool, I want to just do that. Like, these are... On the left is uh, one of my first jam games. That actually, it got first in a mini jam. It wasn't a big mini jam. Uh, going back to the thing that placements don't matter, a lot of the time your placement is more of a factor of join count than <laughs> actual quality. But somebody even commented about the fact that one of the characters just straight up looks like they're from Devil Desert Punk, which is an anime I really like the art style of. Because it's like this kind of sci-fi, shooty, apocalypse, desert, gas masky sort of vibe, and I loved it. Uh, and I just straight up was like, you know what, I want to make a game that's kind of desert punky because I love desert punk. Like, whatever. Like, it is a weird game. It's one of my older games, I should say, which is why it's so scuffed, but yeah. And on the right is me basically just ripping off, like, just taking Inscription's visual style and doing it in my own way. Because Inscription is so goddamn good. If you haven't played Inscription, do it. Uh, if you can. But yeah, because something a lot of people I've noticed, especially new game jammers, this is a lot more of a new game jammer problem, is uh, that they, they worry about being unique. It's like, yeah, I, I have an idea, but I think everybody else will do it. Yeah, I, I want to make that this, but it's basically just a copy of X game, like X game. It's like, so? Do it anyways. Like, as a game developer, what what is your goal? Like, do you want to make games that are like the things you like? Is that not what we want? Like, just, it's hard, it's, it's weird for me whenever I see a new game developer who's like, yeah, but this is like a copy of them. Like, copy it, you're learning. You're having fun right now. When you're starting out, have fun. Do the fun things. And it's fun to dig into things you like and be like, yeah, I I love that thing so much. I'm going a, I'm to a do something similar. I'm going to take my own spin on it. I'm going I'm to take it out for a drive. Like, maybe you'll lose ratings depending on certain jam, like, uh, whatchamacallits, categories. Voting categories. Maybe you'll learn, lose some points in originality. But what strikes people a lot more than originality is just passion. You don't have to be original about something. If you love what you're making, like if you're like, oh, I'm, 
I'm I'm excited to rip off this thing. I like obviously rip off isn't a a good word for it because you shouldn't rip anything off. What you should be doing is just really invoking the spirit of the thing you like. Take the things you like about it and run with it. Like I made a game about voting that had d desert punk style, uh, and I'll, most of the characters aren't based on desert punk characters. They're just fucking shitty drawings I whipped up. The uh, inscription-inspired game I made doesn't have inscription gameplay. It just has a very similar board and uh, aesthetic. Like, people... I believe people really like to see people, others, make things based on the shit they like. And that's cool. Like, passion speaks a thousand words. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna get a bit rambly about this because I'm, I'm so passionate about it. Like... You know, just make things you want to make. It, don't worry about originality. Just don't don't worry about originality. It's not as valuable as you think it is. And you'll make something original by combining the things you like. So don't care if somebody says, yeah, but your idea is exactly like this. Especially if you're on the internet. If you're on the internet and you show some, like, if you show in a public forum your idea, be prepared for everybody to accidentally like kind of coldly list off everything you're unknowingly ripping off like yeah it, 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 who cares M make things have fun be passionate about them jam stacking i just want to quickly go over this one because it's a very interesting concept uh so what is it why to do it so jam stacking is when you basically find two game jams going on at the same time and their rules allow you to submit your entry to multiple game jams uh, now, why would you want to do this? Well, it's because it's, it's fun, mainly. Uh, you get more limitations, like the, the game that's playing right now is, I made this for, this is my game that actually plays top, I think it was 33rd in one of the GMTK game jams. Uh, but, I, I did it, I, I jam stacked it, I did this game jam while doing a mini jam, which was mini jam doodle, and I had three limitations to work off, because... Something a lot of people are like when when you when people hear this they they still go like whoa that sounds like a lot of work and it's like no it's actually kind of easier because it, it narrows your planning time down like the I had three because mini jam does a limitation and a theme which was it was doodle it was joined together and it was one room and like I just was like oh that's the, the one room thing actually simplifies what I'm making because now I don't have to worry about like a like a level system but yeah why to do it it's fun uh if make sure whatever jams you're doing allow for that though uh never it's not fun to break a jams rules like just don't it's such a a lot of the time, if you cheat during a game jam, the only person who's getting screwed over by it is yourself. And it's just, like, sad to watch. But yeah, in the end, like, you don't have to jam stack, obviously. And I wouldn't even say it helps you in very many ways. But if you're looking to have fun and you find the limitations, like, a very fun part of game jamming, then, which I mean, I feel like most of us would say it is... Otherwise, like, mainly because that makes up a huge portion of, of game jams. But yeah, I'm not going to stick too much on this slide. It's just a side tangent I wanted to bring up. So, I know that this entire thing is me kind of giving advice. Or, like, giving my thoughts. But no advice is going to help you. Practice will, though. So, on the left is one of my first jam games. It's a card game where you uh, just play characters onto a board and then you press an enter button and they attack each other the left is what i made in 2019 the right i made in 2022 uh so that is a four year gap no advice helped me make like make the transition between these two games uh on the right though i will say the frog uh froglands the frog card game the card art was made by a very good friend uh, who is a very, very talented artist. Uh, but yeah, the the difference in the games is astonishing, like, crazy. And it's not just, like, the card art. 
Uh, I actually still like the card art on the game on the left, even though, like, I was so bad at game, or like, I was so rough. I wouldn't say bad, but I was so, I was so <laughs> spicy with game jamming that the card art on the game on the left is literally pictures I took off of my phone of doodles I did in my sketchbook. Like, that game is so hacked together, but it's, it's beautiful in its own way. It's a beautiful baby boy. But back to the main point that no advice is going to help you. Like, no, no single person can tell you what you need to do to get where you want to go. And the reason for that is that everyone is different, wildly, and nobody knows jack shit. When somebody gives you advice, they are trying to generalize what worked for them. And that won't work for everyone, and a lot of time doesn't work that much for anybody at all. Like, all of the advice I've given, too, you can throw it out the window, and I encourage you to do so. You, you might ask why I bother share it if it's not going to be listened to or shouldn't be. It's not that advice shouldn't be listened to. There is a very amazing uh, mini podcast by uh, Exerbia uh, called Creativity. Catastrativity. God, I cannot say that. Where he mentions that when you're arting, you should take in all of the advice from everyone. Everybody who makes stuff, everybody who has made stuff or wants to make, just everybody's advice on everything. Listen to it, take it in. And then forget it. Like, don't take any, that much of it to heart. Know of it so that you can pull from it if it feels like you could. Use it, try it, and then trash it if it doesn't work for you. A lot of art, in general, is to become a self-scientist. Uh, which is just to study what motivates you. Study what makes you happy. Study what makes your own brain tick. Why are you productive when you're productive? Why are you happy when you're happy? Like, look for that and use it, like... And, and part of that is to realize what advice works for you. Don't... If, if, if somebody gives advice or says, this is how to do a thing, and you've tried it and it doesn't work in the slightest, that doesn't mean they're wrong. What it means is that that advice just doesn't apply to you. For whatever reason... Maybe it's personality, mindset, physical ability. Like, there are things that don't apply to you. I could give you advice on how to, like, make a game. I could do that. But you haven't made the games I've made. You don't know all of the coding things I made. Or I know. I can, if I, like, a, a good way to explain it is I could tell you how to program a game, but if you haven't used C Sharp, my advice might be just jank. Like, some engines use vastly different programming styles. Like, Game Maker Studio, I used to use that a long time ago. It's a very, very different programming style with how you do objects and scripts. Like, it's very different, and I could tell you how I program games, but if you use Game Maker, that ain't gonna help you. But yeah, again, no advice. No, no advice is gonna help you get where you want to go. Practice. So again, how did I get from the left to the right? I, I made a lot of jam games. I made a lot of card games, too. These aren't even my, these aren't two, my only two card games. I've made, like, three other card games between this. I made I basically made another an entire another card game except I never finished that one for a jam or anything so it's kind of dead but I made it like I guess this could be a, a good lesson in your priorities too if you want to get better at card games make card games nobody's going to tell you how to make a better card game you're going to get better at making card games by making them I make a lot of turn based games uh, and because I really like them and I really like making them, and I have gotten very good at making them because I keep making them. I my shooters are ass. Like my, I've made one, and it was passable. It's it's okay to not be great at everything, uh, and you don't need to be. You need to identify your goals, and identify what you want to be good at, because 
You can be a jack of all trades. Not gonna stop you, but if you want to make a town builder, make town builders. If you want to make a really good FPS, make FPSs. Practice and and like consider your practice. But yeah, I, I'm gonna get rambly. Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, happy jamming. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by for this talk.